Hello, welcome and kumustan. Thank you for joining me. My name is Hao. I am your host and I am your occupational therapist. And this is OT Conversations. I am very excited because I have had the opportunity to interview and have a good conversation with my first OTD student. So we talked a lot about the differences of her experience and her practice. So when I say OTD students, guys, here is a student who is going straight to OT doctorate degree. And she's an American and she is studying in Chicago and she did her placement with me and I was her educator or her doctorate facilitator. And I worked with her for three months. I think it's from January to April of this year. And it was such a fascinating experience. And I loved it because I've had a good chance to interview her about some of the differences of the practice and some of the systems between the United States and the United Kingdom. What is very striking is the productivity in terms of the uh, work expectations that they are expected to see around 8 to 10 patients. So that's good. What I like as well is about how they are not shying away from any referrals because if you do an assessment then there is a chance that they can still be charging for the service and that's something that I am a very huge advocate of so do not shy away from the assessment and like I said anything we do matters and has an outcome so I'm not gonna go any more in details about this I hope you enjoy this conversation Cassandra is here with us and she's an OTD student. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's something like that program in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. You can you talk to me about it? So it's a it's is it a PhD? Is yeah. it a master's? It's a, a really specific particular thing. It's so odd. It only applies to occupational therapy. At the end of this, I'll be able to put the letters OTD at the end of my name. So OTD, Occupational Therapy Doctorate. And then after I take my licensing exam, it'll be OTR, Registered Occupational Therapist. So different things, just a different degree. Do I call you a doctor afterwards? Only if I'm feeling pretentious, sure. If you're feeling pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but that's, yes, that's... Uh, my professors are called doctors. And so, therefore, I will be too. Yeah. You will be as well. Technically, yes. That's amazing. I okay. doubt I'll ever go by that. <laughs> yeah, but still, whenever you feel like, no, exactly. like you have the bragging rights. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I don't think we have that program in here. It's an OTD. Mm -hmm. But you also have an MSc, a master's in OT program. I don't. Some people do the master's to doctorate. Some people do a bachelor's. Then they work for a while and then do a doctorate. But the thing that I've done is done my undergrad and then gone straight to doctorate. It's an entry level doctorate. So I do three years before I ever practice as a licensed OT. So after this, mm -hmm. you still have to practice. You can't practice as a licensed OT. Yet. Oh, no, I can. After you have... After I graduate and then after I take the licensing exam. Uh, 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 so uh, there's a licensing examination. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we don't have that in the United Kingdom. Yeah. You just graduate and you're like, you just go for graduate. it. Yeah. So there's only one licensure examination in the States? For OTs. Yes. NBC OT. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And once you are licensed, you just need to register in every state that you wanted to practice. Pretty much, yes. They're working on this thing called like an OT compact. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. I'm not very familiar myself, but there is a number of states that are working together to make the licensing of yourself in one state apply to the rest of the states that are part of the agreement. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I go to school in Chicago, so I am in Illinois. Illinois is part of this compact and mm -hmm. they are 
I don't even know how many other states, let's say 15 or so other states are in on it. And one of those being Washington, where I'm hoping to move after graduation. So mm. easy enough to just transfer over, no extra licensing, okay. registration, et cetera, needed. Because I know for a fact, my, my, my university is accredited by the World Federation of OT and yeah. a lot of my classmates trained to be an OT to mm. go to the States. Mm. And once, from what I gathered, is that once you're an OTR, once you've taken the state examination, you're an OTR, and then you can just choose the state where you want to go, and then you can just register, but you don't need to actually take an exam right. anymore, right. as compared to physiotherapists, mm -hmm. where every state, apparently, you have to take an exam. Yikes. So that's probably the, the but that was like 90s mm -hmm. or even 80s, 90s, 2000s, I don't know what it's like now. Mm -hmm. But what I find really interesting is that you have, and you're in a program where it's an OTD, and after this, you can choose to call yourself a doctor, but by law, if you get summoned, mm -hmm. then you will be, what's the word, you'll be a witness as a doctor of occupational therapist. Yes. Yeah, technically, that is how we'll have to fill out forms as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. You know, humility dictates you don't want to quote you being a doctor, but mm -hmm. by law, you will be. Yeah. Okay. And how long is the program? I chose the shortest one. It's semi-accelerated. So it's two years, nine months. Some, two years and nine months. Some others are about like three and a half. Okay. But I chose the quickest. <laughs> you chose the quickest. And... So regardless of the, whether it's short or longest or long, mm -hmm. you still have to sit in a state examination. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And the state, do you know what it entails? I've taken a sample one for fun. How did, <laughs> and it, for did it go? It went well. I got a score that means that I would pass it. Really? Um, Straight away? Yeah. Wow. Which is encouraging. It's not something that I was expecting necessarily, but happy to see it. Sometimes you don't know how much you do know, and it's nice to see it on paper that you more more than you thought. But there's like theory questions and then a separate section that has to do with like simulation questions. The theory questions can have more to do with a small little case study of six sentences introduction to a patient and then like maybe six questions following that of what to do when what parts of the body are affected mm. interventions and things like mm. that and then the simulation things are pretty unfamiliar to me but they seem to follow along the same line a bit mm. and then the exam it covers all areas right yeah it's pediatrics Mental it's health. Everything, yeah. Neuroscience. Neurosciences, yeah. adult dysfunction, mm -hmm. physical dysfunction in adult, mental health dysfunction in pediatrics. All of it, yeah. All of it under the sun. Anything under the sun that Anything. an occupational therapist can be faced with. So technically, once you have that registration and license, mm -hmm. you can choose to work in any field. Yeah. The certification shows that at baseline, you're ready to help anybody. Great. And there's no grading. There's no basic grade or there's mm. no grading a, as a therapist. Once you're licensed, you're a licensed therapist. Will there be like, well, I've seen here, there's used to be basic grade, senior two, senior one, mm. Mm -hmm. and then OT manager. And then they changed that all. Now in here, there is banding yeah. in NHS. So there's band five, band six, band seven, band eight. Yeah. So that's the, the, there, there are some grading in terms of the work and and i think along with that comes with skills mm -hmm. which is i wouldn't find it in some ways it's strange for me because i train from a different place but in the states once you have that license would there be any grading or uh, work grading no we're all occupational therapists and uh, beyond that it's just like maybe a department head but there's no like differentiation between who's worked longest or who's who knows the most. The thing that people do is here they do like professional development mm -hmm. in terms of in different terms. Over in the states, we do like different certification courses mm -hmm. and things like that. For instance, like a certified hand therapist can get a certification for hand therapy, mm -hmm. and then they are an OTD, OTR, CHT. Mm -hmm. C certified hand therapist. Mm -hmm. So that's the only differentiation, but okay. that doesn't 
Expand you differently. Meant that you've or... taken extra studies yeah. on a particular field. And that's really interesting. And then once, what else is my question? So that's really interesting because in here, you can qualify to be an occupational therapist mm -hmm. and yet not know how to manage pediatric dysfunction mm -hmm. if you didn't come across it in your placement or your mental health, you may not have had that experience. Mm -hmm. So it's always like starting all over again or whenever you qualify. But do you take classes? Do you have, did you have a class on pediatrics? In here, I couldn't tell. Okay. Because I, I wasn't trained here. Right, yeah. I really don't know. That's a, a good question. Because that's, 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 that's what we do. We do like a pediatrics class for eight to 12 weeks for level one and then level two. Mm. At that point, you should be ready to just be planted in the clinic mm. and do a placement and then head on out. I, d my personal preference is not pediatrics. <laughs> what is your pre personal preference? I love adults and geriatrics in particular. They are um, nice. I found occupational therapy through working at a care home with mm. people who had strokes. Neuro is also a special population okay. of mine that I adore. But yeah, that's mm. interesting that you might not be ready, even though you've graduated. So if I tell you now cerebral palsy, yeah. you know what it entails? Technically, yeah. Yeah. I've worked with a couple people if yeah. you're to tell me, go lead this clinic. Uh, I think I could have a decent yeah. shot at it. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Because the foundation is there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And again, if you're talking about occupational therapy, it's throughout the lifespan. Mm -hmm. So it really does cover everything. Yeah. Isn't it? From childhood all the way to palliative care mm -hmm. down the very end. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so foundation skills and knowledge is there. We've talked about that in terms of your practice. We're talking that you will have to sit in an exam, which makes every therapist have the same skills technically, won't they? Once you sit in the exam, once you have the licensure, everybody can trust that everybody should actually be <laughs> at the same skill. Yeah, then you go into professional reasoning versus skill because some okay. people have the intelligence and then other people hmm. or, and those same people might not have the logic and the ability to help people that you hmm. hope somebody might have. So mm -hmm. working in a hospital, how many patients do you normally see? So my previous placement was in a hospital that had a, um, a lot of cardiothoracic stuff going on. So very similar to here in a lot of ways, but over there, as a new grad, I would be responsible for eight to 10 patients. A in day. A shift, yeah. In a shift. Yeah. So. And they are able to monitor this. Mm hmm. Yeah. How are they able to monitor that? So every day there's a list of patients uh -huh. that need to be seen that mm -hmm. are referred by doctors to occupational therapy departments. And you go into that list at the beginning of the morning and you click eight to 10 people on that list. That Randomly. Is like Pretty whoever? much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anybody just, here's the list. Here is a, like a flow of patients that are coming in. All we have are, is a name and a diagnosis. Name, diagnosis, like basic demographics. Basic, yeah, some, yeah. A lot of the, some of the patients that we had been there for months. Uh -huh. So you might continue to work with that same patient, click their name every morning. Mm. There are some what we call frequent flyers, quote unquote, which is people who are frequently coming into your ward. So you might recognize them and say, oh, I've worked with them before. Happy to work with them again. And then other times you might see somebody, for instance, with CF and mm -hmm. you have a basic interest in CF. So you just you pick them up, click them. Yeah. And then the other eight. So that's, whoever that's, you want. <laughs> that's all your responsibility. As long as you pick up eight, is it eight? Eight to 10? Eight no. to 10. There's a... Quota? It, there's, yeah, there's a quota. There's a productivity standard. So the product, productivity standard at the place that I was at was, I believe, about 70%, um, which is a bit lower than usual. Um, a lot of places have 80%, um, if I'm not misremembering. Of your time. Yeah. That has to be face-to-face -face with the patient. Okay. Um, so the idea is that you see each of those patients 
and that you write a note for each of those patients and you offer them the resources and do the billing and everything all within that eight hour shift. Or, okay. Yeah. So see the patient face to face therapy intervention, mm -hmm. do the documentation and billing. That's a new concept for us here. We don't yeah. have any billing. Phenomenal. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So what does that mean? So for us, it's, pretty straightforward. You just go to this like little billing tab and you click how much time you spent on what different things. So for instance, therapeutic activity or exercises, caregiver education, what's the word? Adaptive te tech or equipment. Training. That could be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. There's like different ways to categorize it and you can say 45 minutes on this and 15 minutes on this. Mm. And those 45 minutes are and those 15 minutes are different, like equation, put into different equations to just build them for different things. So. And then the ones that would build the wood, it goes through a central office somewhere mm -hmm. who will charge the insurance companies. Yes. Or would the patient privately pay for them themselves? It depends, but some people do private payment. Yeah. I think that'd be very expensive. It's incredibly expensive. Yeah. How, how much do you know? I have no idea. Okay. I knew one person. I didn't know of anybody who was privately paying I see. within my hospital, but I knew some people who would go to like elective rehab after uh -huh. they came to see us that would privately pay. And it was like in like thousands a week, like, a week in the yeah. thousands, thousands a day, probably like, a thousand a day. I ish that ish. Yeah. Okay. Because there's always insurances that pay for it. It's something that you never have to worry about. You do have to worry about it <laughs> No, I mean, uh, for some things that they don't cover. So some ah, equipment yes. they might not cover or some medications they might not cover or some um, interventions they might not cover. Okay. For instance, uh, just pulling something out of the woodwork is like therapeutic recreation, like recreational therapy. They might not see that as therapeutic, actually. So they're like, you were bowling for an hour with an occupational therapist. Uh -huh. No, we're not paying for that. So then that's up to you. But you need for. to document it in a way that is suitable, that is covered. The occupational therapist would attempt as best they could to document it in the most like therapeutic terms possible. Okay. Because obviously we believe it's therapeutic to them. Like, okay. That is therapy. So we think that insurance should cover it, but sometimes they have their own ideas. And then whenever you see patients and they're mm -hmm. under insurances, for example, would you know mm -hmm. in advance what, what is covered? In general terms, yes. So for instance, some folks might have Medicaid. That Medicaid covers either a walker or a wheelchair. So you have to ask for a wheelchair and then ask the patient themselves to get a walker because the walker is the cheaper option. So it's cheaper for the patient if they want to get both. And you can't just use the wheelchair as a walker. We don't recommend it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just cut, cut, cost cutting. So here's the, the, the wheelchair. I use it like a walker. <laughs> I'm putting the shopping in there. But yes, you wouldn't recommend it. That's quite true. Wow. So what I'm getting is that this is what's interesting because every clinician mm -hmm. has a target of seeing eight to 10 patients a day. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing things down, you can tick, it's almost like a core input, the things that you would provide, which is something that we're doing here. It's something that I know that is very useful, but in other places, it's something that's not being covered. But in, in our current pra practice, I have this thing and I called it core input, mm -hmm. which means anything that we do will fall, fall on those core input. In short, I call it coin. Oh, cute. <laughs> Isn't it? So at the end of the session, you have the coin collection tool. If you want to collect mm -hmm. it, it's like a data collection tool. Nice. It's yeah. like core input collection tool. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And I can confidently say how much of our time is being spent on functional mobility retraining mm -hmm. or on mm -hmm. ADL retraining or performance component retraining or assessment, mm -hmm. discharge planning and things like that. You wouldn't have any input on discharge planning. Oh, for sure we would. You would as well. Yeah, that's a that's probably like the main thing that they look for look to us for in my last placement. So the similar setting as a hospital. <laughs> yeah. From our first note, we write down what we think their discharge plan is. Would you charge for that, a discharge planning activities? 
Mm, no, I think it's pretty much included. It's just like part of the overall service. It's part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is part of it. It's just like <laughs> you're doing it because you want to discharge the patient. Yeah, I think at the hospital that I was at, discharge planning and occupational therapy was like synonymous for doctors and yeah. nurses and things. And what's interesting as well is that the doctors themselves mm -hmm. would refer the patients over to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they would have their notes yeah. and they would prescribe occupational therapy. Yeah. And their prescription is would come out as a referral. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah. It's a, like a little checkbox that they put in. And that will come out of their notes that they have done that as mm -hmm. well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Because it's all like a centralized, like electric medical record, the doctor's notes, the nurse's notes, et cetera. They would all point to occupational therapy is needed. Mm. Like it, there's a paper trail. <laughs> and would you complain about the receiving a referral? Why would I complain? <laughs> what if it's not appropriate? I wouldn't complain. I just, just go just... see them and be like, they're not appropriate. And then and write a note saying, saw them mobilize, saw them do all these things for themselves to be sure that they're safe to go home. They don't need me. Will you still build them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. I guess it depends. So That's... if it's so obvious that I don't actually have to watch them do anything, I just chat with them for like under screen. 10 minutes. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. Screen. Then I can just write a little like post-it note worth of information, discharging them from occupational therapy. And then, yeah, they're not charged. But if I have to do an actual evaluation to be sure, then yeah, they're charged for an evaluation. For an evaluation. Mm -hmm. When you find out what's wrong mm -hmm. is an evaluation, isn't it? You try to find out what's happening. Let's look at this in detail. That's an evaluation, isn't it? Yeah, even if I don't feel like there's anything that they need help with. If they, we would call it baseline functioning. So mm. I can see that they might be like slower going or more breathless or something like that. But if it's their baseline and they're used to it and they have all the supports that I feel they need, then mm. I'm still charging them for that eval, but we're mm. just still discontinuing services. <laughs> Beautiful. That's what I've been saying all along. Yeah. We shouldn't shy away from referrals because I think in practice in this part of the world, Maybe not in generalizing, a good majority, almost like generalizing, but not, <laughs> but a good proportion is that there will be referrals. Our referrals will be coming from the ward, not directly from the doctors, mm -hmm. is coming from nurses or the ward. Mm -hmm. And then we would be screening and we'd be questioning the referrals. Why did you refer? not suitable why or the in inappropriate referral you didn't have any reason why you're referring why do we need to see so there's more of a screening mm -hmm. attitude or avoidance mm -hmm. like screening avoidance attitude for lack of better words whereas mm -hmm. in your system it's interesting because every name goes into a pool and you just need to pick eight to ten and that's your job done can you pick up more Sure. If you think you have time, for instance, sometimes you pick up nine people uh. and four of them are getting CTs, ECGs, they're off the floor, all that stuff. You try them once or twice, uh. you have no luck, you don't have time to come back and try them again. So you pick up other people mm. to keep your productivity standards up. And you would do that at your own initiative? Yes, but you are feeling the pressure too because of your productivity. There is uh, a monitor standard. of productivity Correct. standard. Yeah, there's a percentage that comes out every day, every year, averaging okay. your productivity. Yeah. And if you're found to be below that standard of productivity, then steps can be taken to correct that or to remove you from your position. Really? Yeah. Is it difficult to be terminated or is it easy to be terminated? I would say it's, in comparison, I would say it's easier than here. Why is that? Um, from they can just fire you, like I see in movies. Yeah, I don't mean, come back tomorrow. You're fired. They yeah, can just... you you do sign a document saying your company does not need to tell you why they're firing you, and they do not have to give you warning. Whoa! <laughs> it's like what in the movies? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I don't like you. You're just fired. Don't come back tomorrow. But you can't argue with that. 
No, unless you think it's an unfair firing. If they sit, if they quote your productivity standards and you're at 85%, then you can wonder if I'm meeting it. If productivity is 75 or 80, how can you quote that? They don't actually have to give you a reason. Wow. But equally, can you leave yeah. whenever you want? It's common courtesy to offer two weeks notice, but legally, no. I, I don't think that there's any sort of agreement that you make. It's, it's quid pro quo. Okay. <laughs> Do you think occupational therapists are regarded more in your country? No? I think they're regarded more highly here. Really? At least people know what it is. Really? <laughs> yeah. In the States, I have to define my job like 11 times a day. Okay. Quite a lot of the time, we're still just known as physios mm -hmm. or the nurse or something, which is a little bit frustrating in and of itself. But here, people know what occupational therapy is. Like I just talk, chat to people on the street, you know, in mm. line for things. I'm just a friendly American <laughs> living up to my stereotype. And they're like, oh, so what are you here for? What do you do? Because they hear the accent and they're wondering what the heck I'm here for. And I say, oh, I'm doing an occupational therapy placement. And they're like, oh, that's phenomenal. My mom had occupational therapy or my son has occupational therapy. Mm. Or they just know what it is in general. And mm. I'm such a fan of that. But you won't be short of things to do, though. Never. No. In the States, Correct. you'll always get the referral. There's always people to see. I, yeah, I can't imagine a slow day. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's amazing because oh, it's just different. It's very difficult to compare it, which ones is better. But I think the reason why we're doing this is so that people will have an awareness of how it is in other places. Yeah. And then I can only speak for myself in a yeah. major city yeah. where there's a lot of like social health inequi inequity and oh, it's a pretty well-known city where with like lots of different hospitals known for specific things, mm. there's not as many places mm. around me that offer the same things. So it's very centralized. People have to come to us. What about documentation? Mm -hmm. So when you're documenting, the very popular one is the SOAP format. Would you still mm -hmm. do that? A bit. Like that's a general outline, but we have a, every, pretty much every hospital has a template. Uh -huh. So that can be different for different wards. So for instance, behavioral health can be, in my experience, more of a couple of paragraphs, mm -hmm. more in line with SOAP. But if you're in acute care, they recognize that things need to be streamlined things need to be fast so you're checking boxes mm -hmm. more or you have quick phrases that you rely on but oftentimes you just click on what you've worked on for what reason and then write in a couple a couple sentences saying this is necessary because they're experiencing these deficits and then sign off so you just click on this is it's already there isn't it yeah is the things that you would do mm -hmm. would always be there. Would you be doing anything away from those clickable items? Depending, I would. <laughs> I, there's others. There's others. Oh yeah. yeah, there's like another category for sure. Or you can just work it in. You can work on the typical things like bathing or toileting or getting dressed or something like that. But then there's also just therapeutic activities, which mm. is very much an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. And so... For instance, giving yourself a facial <laughs> or cleaning your room, your mm -hmm. hospital room. Those can be therapeutic activities. And that can be a session. Yeah. Let's start cleaning the room. Yeah. Let's start cleaning your room. Yeah. And then you can justify that as a like a home management simulated yeah, activity. Exactly. I did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one person, we wanted to take her off her walker to challenge her because if you don't challenge them to the point where they need assistance, then they can be cut off from occupational therapy. They need to be showing that, that they're they, doing. they are challenged and that they need occupational therapy. So for instance, this person was doing quote unquote too well. <laughs> we didn't want her to get her cut off from receiving our services. So we removed her from the walker and tried to work on her dynamic balance and mm -hmm. picking up things from the floor putting things on shelves. Mm -hmm. I did a little I spy game with her. What was it? An I spy? I spy. I yeah, 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 yeah. Or 
this a searching game so that she'd have to move her head while she walked uh -huh. to try to find these smoothie bottles that I hid okay. around the okay. the place because she lives alone. <laughs> would you issue walkers? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Would you do stairs? That is a funny thing. I have done stairs, but it's very much a, a physio thing Okay. In, in the settings that I was in. Would you do shower transfers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would do that. Like you say, dynamic balance, mm -hmm. you do that too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Device management, medication management, helping train somebody on walkers was something that I was pretty consistently doing. Safety, a big thing as well. Wow. I think there's a lot more that we can be talking about. I think we'll put this as maybe a part one of my okay. fascination with the things <laughs> that's happening or mm -hmm. what you're doing, mm -hmm. because I think we're going to be learning a lot from your experience or from whatever is happening out there. And it gives us a better awareness. I think I need some time to, to sit down and digest this, or maybe whoever is listening or would be listening to this would have time to, to digest this. I'm hoping we can do this again. Of course. Is that okay? Yeah. For the amount of time that you are with us, <laughs> I am taking advantage of this <laughs> because there's a lot of learnings that we can pick up from this. Mm -hmm. More with your OTD, with the education, how did you get to, to come to England to mm -hmm. do this? We want to learn the process. <laughs> it's something that this is something new if it's something if there's a lot of otd programs are there a lot of otd programs in the states there are quite a bit and they're switching over from masters to doctorate yeah I know. it's looking like it might be required sooner uh, than later i know because i have some classmates mm -hmm. who are now otds and they've been posting their new tolga or new uh, like graduation attire. Oh gosh, I hate the graduation attire. I graduate yeah. in April and uh. I'm going to look like Lord Farquaad from <laughs> Shrek. It looks terrible. <laughs> so it's that. They've been serious like now OTD and wow, that opportunity is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because in here, CPD is, you, you just do, you do CPD activities mm -hmm. and you can or may not, but you would put yourself at risk should you be called for an audit. Mm -hmm. So there are people who's not been doing some CPD activities, but they can carry on. You just need to register and you're still registered. Mm -hmm. But I think the system in this country is you have to have, you can be picked up for an audit. Mm -hmm. So a certain percentage of the cohort of the, all of the OTs gets picked up. And they get reviewed and they get audited for their uh, CPDs. Whereas in the States, it's different, isn't it? You just need to gather certain points. Is that right? Yeah, there's continuing education credits. Excuse me. I'm not sure about the auditing process. I know there's like more, there's oversight of it. There's making sure that you have these credits to then be able to register like every two years or something yeah. like that. To renew your registration, renew it, you need yeah. to present that you have earn this amount of credits yeah and it's straightforward then mm -hmm. isn't it you can be you could easily complete all your, your credit scores not like a credit card see mm -hmm. continuing education scores in in six months and that's you ready for registration for the following year isn't it because yeah, you can do it you can do it early it's, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if you can do it ahead of time. So if you do 48 continuing education credits for the two years, I wonder if you have to do it like 24, 24 each year. I'm not sure. Okay. Cross that, that bridge fine. when I get to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's interesting because you also have to take time off yeah. to then go to these courses or you have to you also have to pay for them. Exactly. And that's um, the killer, isn't it? It really is because none of them are cheap. They know that they have you. They're like, you do it or you run the risk of not being able to register, renew your regist registration. Registration. So you really, really have to pay for these things. Yeah. And I think so, people pay more attention if they pay for mm -hmm. things. <laughs> that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you hear things that are just wild. It's like a two days, eight hours a day, and it's $1,200. It, and your work can only pay for five hundred dollars a year, so that's you have to nothing. <laughs> you have to save up for it. You have to save up for it. You definitely want to be passionate about the things that you're getting of educated course. about. And sometimes, at some point, you got to run out. 
<laughs> I yeah, imagine. Very true.、Um, you have to allocate a certain amount of your income to your professional、yeah. development, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's、sure. part of that. Okay. See, I told you we're not going to end. Yeah. You know? so. so we'll do this again. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, we'll do this again. Thank you. And this is our first session. Thank you. And until next time. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>